we both worked on Interior Design Masters. That's right, love. Um, you are the presenter of it, mm-hmm. uh, the, the BBC smash hit show. Thank you, darling. It's been moved to BBC One, it which has, is always lovely. Which I think you're largely responsible for. Oh, that's very nice. So tell everyone what, what Interior Design Masters is. Yeah, well, it's this show. It was... Um, interior that people might know it from um fern cotton who did series one right. absolutely brilliant and then she couldn't do it anymore because of a podcast or something so they stepped in with me and i was like oh okay because you know you always just hate doing that kind of thing but i love interior design and i loved uh, i loved watching fern on it and i thought oh, actually i'd really like this show so i did do it and i'm really glad i did because it has just got such a warm lovely show and it was like going back to what i was saying before about being in the right place at the right time during a pandemic, we are staring at four walls. It sort of is, you know, it was, It sort of made sense. You know, everyone now, you know, B&Q and all that, they're running out of stock because everyone's stuck in their house. Faux botanicals, every, rugs, yeah. you name it, soft furnishings. And it's just, it came at the right time. And do you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm always getting nervous. And I never watch it's stuff when it comes out because I'm always hiding behind the sofa because I always get you don't watch it you don't watch it I do I do watch it now but I don't watch it when it comes out because I'm so nervous but when the BBC it was called Interior Design Masters when they said with Alan Carr they changed the title I went oh that's a good sign because that means it must be good yeah unless they want to really derail my career (laughs) (laughs) they're on your side with Alan Carr yeah yeah. (laughs) um, so that was nice but I mean it's you know what the show is it's so lovely and great and it and then in the one that's coming out in January I can touch people which sounds wrong but I (laughs) know you know because when people went in the first time I did it you couldn't hug them because of Covid yeah and they're crying going this is my dream and I'm going home like (laughs) bye bitch (laughs) But but you know but now I can hug them. Yeah. And it's so nice so you lovely. can put your arm around them because it is such a warm, lovely show that that's the one thing missing. But, I mean, it was so nice not to do it in pandemic because, you know, people, there is a girl who stands there with a two-metre stick who will just, like, ram it in your stomach if you get yeah. too close. Yeah. So it's weird making TV during a pandemic. I mean, and how good was it that not... Well, someone got it, but no one... No one who could have up just derailed the show. Yes. So, I mean, we all the show went good. on. Yeah, the show went on and no one got COVID touch yeah. wood. It yes. was amazing. Yeah. And how are you with interior design? If we come around Alan's house for a cup of tea, uh, will our drawers drop to the floor? Um, will your drawers drop? Drop or jaws? Did, what did I say? Draw. <laughs> will our jaw drop? <laughs> your drawers will drop. Um, <laughs> I don't. I live in a brothel. <laughs> no, um, no I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shit at anything like that. I mean, at least I can light a candle and put, uh, put um, you know, put some Ob J Dar out. But no, I don't know that. The tra- I mean, can we talk about how amazing the tradespeople are on it? Yeah. Not the biggest budget in the world. Yeah. Working round the clock, they are absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I mean, they are so. I mean, because some of the places, well, let's not name and shame, but some of the places are shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of them are really transformed. So, I mean, they are genius. I mean, that for me is like witchcraft, looking at that. Yeah. You know, putting up a bloody painting. I'm like, wow, how have you done that? I mean, like, just with a hammer and a nail. <laughs> yeah, I'm like watching Cirque du Soleil, someone put up. Yeah. A, yeah, or Dado Rail. Is it? Yeah, that's it. Not but, dildo, um. Dildo, dildo, <laughs> dildo, 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 <laughs> back to my brothel. <laughs> <laughs> Love the theme that's threading through all this. Yes. Um, so, yeah, can't wait for that to come out, obviously. Friday yeah. Night Project I want to talk about now. Oh, my God, you're going right back now. We're going right back. But that's where I first discovered you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I absolutely loved that show, like so many people did. For me, that time in telly was like the golden age of TV. Like you could get, get away with anything. It was yeah. kind of rock and roll, especially your show. I mean, it was <laughs> naughty. It was very naughty. But, do you, you have know, really fond memories of it? I've saw the most amazing memories of it. But in, do you know what? And then um, you have a few shows after that weren't as successful. And I, that's the first show I did. And it was so, and it was really successful. And I, I wish I'd sort of enjoyed it more. Because when you're on a hot show, and I mean, I suppose like the, you know, the ch- chatty man, I mean, towards the chatty man, towards the end sort of lost its way a bit. But in the beginning, it was that energy that you get with um, 
with Chatty Man and stuff. But I mean, the, the Friday Night Project, you try and explain to people who don't know it. I mean, having Amy Winehouse as your house band, Lady Gaga as your house band, Kanye West, Mariah Carey, you know, all these people on, you know, and just... It's insane. And it felt like the whole country was tuning in to watch it as well. It was that yeah, time when people did. did. we get Kanye West on? <laughs> and we... Um, what a lovely bloke, absolutely lovely bloke. And he came on, and of course, we, they don't have people like me and Justin in America. So he comes on, I'm like, hello, Kanye. <laughs> and then Justin's like, all right, my lover, <laughs> welcome to Friday Night Project. And then he said to his assistant, okay, okay, this is punked. This is punk. come out now. This is punked. This is not a real show. <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's a real show. He went, come on, no, 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 this is a joke. This is a joke. He thought it was a wind up because he was like, why would these two be hosting a show? <laughs> and then um, and then there was a miscommunication. And then um, he finally turned up at the studio and we'd done a uh, music video pastiche of his um, songs. And he says he's got a great sense of humour, but his, his songs are, they're not to be touched and you do not mock his songs. Those songs are there. Uh. Cut to us doing You Ain't Nothing But A Gold Dogger. <laughs> <laughs> and me, me and Justin dressed up as rappers. And then, like, you know, <laughs> I mean, this is sexist, and I know I'm a feminist, but there were people on dog chains. We were, <laughs> this was 2006. Yeah. Disgusting. I, I, but, I mean, it was taking the piss out of rap. But I don't think he knew what gold dogger was. It just went You over ain't his nothing head. but a gold dogger. And his, <laughs> guy and his people are like, and he was just. But what? It was really sweet and really lovely. Then Mariah Carey, um, she had her 18th UK number, oh no, 18th American number one, Touch My Body, and just invited us for dinner at her place. It was amazing. Just casually, another name drop, Alan. I know. <laughs> Melissa, what do you want? I'm, People want the name dropping. <laughs> no, but it was one of those weird things. It was just, it was uh, such an energy about it. And it was so much fun. And it was a time and place. And yeah, absolutely wonderful. And then you went on to live out, I think, a lot of comedians' dreams. I'm not a comedian, but the chat show for me would be a dream come true. You got a chat show. You were in the lineup with all the other guys. And it was it was massive, and you were interviewing Hollywood stars every week. What what was that like? Because then you're you must have got a lot more famous at that point too, right? Yeah, but the, the thing is, it's um, getting your chat show is a dream. I, everything sort of came really early in my career, and I just wonder what I'm, I mean when I'm in Celebrity Big Brother and the Jungle in the next five years. I mean, I've sort of done everything. I've got brought back all these game shows as well. Me epic game show, play your cards, but price, price is right and all that. Strike it lucky. I mean, I'm getting through all my bucket list. I mean, yeah. it's got, it can only go down. <laughs> it can only go down. I'll be on Celebrity Pointless next. Um, no, but then, yeah, that was a, that was amazing having a, a chat show. And, um, and I remember we had Rihanna and Justin Timberlake on Chatty Man. And that's when people started taking us seriously. And I mean, they do all that shit where like, oh, boo, it's Graham Norton, Jonathan Ross. They are both friends of mine. I mean, it's all absolutely crap. And listen, I'm just flattered people come on. I mean... I had Britney Spears on mine. That's amazing. She came on my show. I mean, yeah, she wanted to come up. Well, allegedly. I mean, I'm sure it's her people. But it I was mean... pre-censorship, I imagine. So she probably did want to come on. Yeah. yeah. Willingly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She escaped from a cage. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, she was so adorable. She was lovely. But, you know, yeah, I do pinch myself. Did you have any really terrible interviews, some really awkward ones? I won't mention the name, but I mean, I've got a crap poker face and they told me, the man come down and said, do not mention his hair. <laughs> so, of course, I'm like, ah! <laughs> hair, the hair, the hair, the hair. Hair, 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 as he comes down. I can't, I can't look at it. I mean, I sort of saw the join, so I guess it was a wig. But you don't say that to me. <laughs> I've got no poker face. <laughs> hair. Then who else was, um, who else? Everyone's sort of all right, really. I mean, I'm not being, I hate that when people go, oh, everyone's adorable, because there were some right arseholes on the show. But <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can't really think. My favourite one is uh, Grace Jones, because she um, she just, all she wanted was um, 
six bottles of red wine and some fresh oysters in her dressing room <laughs> and she just nailed it all. I'm like, oh great, she's going to be pissed and horny. <laughs> and then I ended up getting off with her um, because I'd had some tequila. She nearly killed her boyfriend with tequila. Of course you had, you always got the tequila. Yeah, me out. globe, oh, me yes. globe, yes, yes. And then we'd always do with the globe, we'd say to anyone, um, it was a bit like Secret Santa, any crew that went on holiday, cameraman, sound guy, you had a five euro budget and you had to bring something back for the globe. So there was some fucking shit in there, I'll tell you. And then at the end, oh, well, this is, I've been hung over a lot. This is the <laughs> worst hangover on I've had. On oh, 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 oh my God, I was so pissed. I was like slagging off Romish, rung an Athan's eye. <laughs> God, I was like, look at your eye. You got one eye on dim, one eye on dazzle. <laughs> I was so pissed. He makes that joke, but that's okay. <laughs> I know he can. I love Romesh. I mean, what an arsehole. I woke up and I was like, oh my God, what did I do last night? <gasps> I hosted a chat show. What did I say? And I rang up. Oh my God, the worst fear ever. But this is the worst hangover. On the final chatty man, they'd made a um, vodka luge of my face. And they were putting um, everything everything in the globe <laughs> down the flume and everyone was just drinking. I mean, this sounds disgusting now because we live in a post COVID. Well, we're still in the middle of COVID. But I'm mean, back <laughs> then just like sucking on an ice tongue of that. <laughs> and like green fluid, red, blue, shitty, horrible shit <laughs> coming down. And then, I mean, I've never been so hungover because these were all oh, oh. Anyway, that might just made me sick, but isn't it funny we live in this world now where that, can I unhygienic? Everyone just sucking on this ice tongue. Yeah. <laughs> and then coming down again and again. I'm like, Alan, really? But even then that wouldn't happen on telly. Now it's changed even since Chatty Man. Oh, I think you had so much fun back then. I know. You'd have health and safety, you'd have to have someone sterilising the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But now you're on RuPaul's Drag Race, of course, as a judge. Yeah. And that's amazing. Oh, God. I and you must show. have fun on that. Oh, that's a lot of fun. That yeah. is so much fun. And that, that yet yeah, again, came at the right time. I mean, everyone's depressed during lockdown and just getting, oh, my God. And then, uh, you know, then I just went off to this secret world in Manchester where, you know, you spent the whole day with people being very camp and wearing a bit of glitter and the most amazing outfits and it was just oh really pepped me up it was perfect yeah. all covid friendly and all that because i hate those bloody things i know you've got to have them but you know it's like a because you know there's michelle visage there's rupaul and then me it looked like being a very gay post office <laughs> we're all in those little <laughs> boobs that we were the perfect but judging that, people judging and i do that so well <laughs> you do and have you had a thought about this Oh, here we go. What? Your drag name, your drag queen name, what it would be. Because oh. I've had to think about mine. Oh, I'm, I'm, my, my, I'm Mr. Winter, so it's um, Icy Winter, I thought would be mine. Oh, the, Icy. The cold bitch. Well, I dot C Winter or Icy. Yeah, like in... Icy Winter, like like cold. Icy Y. <laughs> yes. I see. No, no, I just, just <laughs> You're confusing it, right. it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what would mine be? Um. You know what's French for shower cap? Bonnie de douche. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Bonnie de douche? Bonnie de douche, I love it's it. French, it could work. Because uh, I can see I... the outfit now. Yes. With your little scrubber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you call me, little scrubber. <laughs> but I feel with that, at least I can perform in France now, if it's Bonnie de douche. Maybe on the Champs Elysees. Yes. The Lido. Very classy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually performed at the Lido with... um. League of Their Own Road Trip. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it was so funny. But they hadn't told these the tourists there that it wasn't the sexy girls. It was me, Jamie Redknapp, and all that. In the <laughs> pants. Oh, my God, I've never seen so many people look so pissed off. Like, oh, these aren't sexy women. <laughs> yeah. So, Alan, you, you've got, you know, such a, a wonderful job. What's the secret for you staying on top of what you're doing and staying staying employed so successfully. I know. Why do, why do people keep... I mean, I know why and lot, so well, many people know. But I, what, in your opinion, why do people keep picking up the phone? Well, I don't know really. I mean, I feel I'm fair and I, no one likes to say they're nice, but I feel I am nice. I mean, you know, I'm not like horrible. I mean, you get some... The thing is, people think that... Um, you don't call the shots, people around you call the shots. And, and let's face it, if, if you're trouble... You just don't get employed. You know what it's like. 
you know, people think that I go in there, BBC, get me a job. I want to host this. You don't. You're very lucky. You got, And you're thankful. And, you know, I'm just thankful. I think you've always got to remember the crappy jobs I've done. You know, I was like packing shampoo, call centre, and I'm always thankful. And I've got this very irrational fear that I'm going to end up back there. So, I mean, I'm always just nice and Feet on the ground. Yeah, you've yeah. got to really. I mean, what a job. And you get paid for it. I mean, you meet really interesting people. You know, it's just nice. It's nice. It could be a lot worse. And you just got to be thankful. And you know what? It will. It will all end one day. But I'm just enjoying the ride at the minute. Oh, I love that. It's just Alan in a bunker in Soho. <laughs> I mean, this, what is this? <laughs> Bit of foliage. This is something someone will do on interior design <laughs> yeah. and go home. 